<laughs> Saw her attempt at getting extreme all by myself. Now, that was the press of the Junior X Games 2, and how extreme was that? Now, I heard a rumor that Dan and Jen are going to have a death defying contest to the top of the speed wall tomorrow, but it's just a rumor. I didn't say anything, so stay tuned for that, maybe. Now, at an attempt to get extreme all by myself, because my lovely pal Dan is in here, I'm going to give you human nature and a very, very extreme dance to it. You don't look no good, XX Extreme! There we go! Impressive Skateboarding. Huge 540 sport climbing. Bike stunt. Four sports, 16 events, over 130 athletes. One enemy, gravity. The Disney Channel and ESPN Junior X Games 2, presented by Toyota. The future tens of extreme. So what Kart from Phuket, Thailand, I'm Jen from Asia. And I'm Dan from Australia, and welcome to the continuation of JX2. And this is Jim Waugh, pro climber and judge here at JX2. Jim, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Welcome, welcome. Oh, thank you, man. All right, Jim, this is your second time being a judge here at JX2. What's going to be the main difference? Ah, the main difference, I think, is going to be bouldering is going to have a practice this year, as well as speed, which means the athletes get to come out and have fun ahead of time and give them more confidence before they go. Excellent. When you say speed and bouldering, what's the actual difference? Bouldering is basically very hard, straight moves. Speed is how fast can they go. Oh, Ooh. perfect. And yeah. how come we have three walls here? Well, <laughs> yeah. you got to have speed, you got to have bouldering, but we got one speed wall where two will go for time and then head to head. Whoever beats who advances. In bouldering, we have two walls, so they get to try one wall and another wall, and we combine it for a score for to see who's the best boulderer. Excellent. Sounds interesting. So, Dan, should we give it a go? Well, are you game? Oh, of course, man. You ready so to take the challenge? So, what do you think, Jim? Both of us? Oh, yeah, speed wall for sure. All right, okay. Who's so going to be the fastest? Uh, oh, of course, me. Uh, yeah, of right. course. Yeah, no, no, of course. No, no, all right. No, come on. While, <laughs> while I warm up and stretch my fingers, let's check out what's on today on GX2. <laughs> On day two of Disney's Junior X Games, we get up close and behind the scenes with one of Inline's greatest athletes. The girls get extreme and the bikers fly high. All right, and welcome to Phuket and to the second day of Disney's Junior X Games 2 presented by Toyota, where the action continues to heat up, making some final checks and preparations before the day's action begins. But we start out with a profile of a Junior X legend in the making. Takeshi Yasutoko. Check out the style there. Takeshi Yasutoko is on his mark. There we go. Huge Viking clip. It's a new variation for Takeshi. Switch 900 to finish it off. You gotta love that. A legend in green glasses, Takeshi Yasutoko. Last year's overall inline champion and also a silver medalist at the Summer X Games in San Francisco. Takeshi won the trip to Disneyland last year and he's gunning for the big prize again. But there's others in hot pursuit. Aggressive inline. All right, here's how it worked. The top 10 semifinalists are into the final. One run each, 45 seconds, and it's scored out of 100. And Bruce, as you look at the lineup, you recognize a lot of the names from the park finals, but some new names as well. And I'm telling you, the Japanese dominating on the vert. Yeah, we've got a good field of Thai, Japanese, and Australian skaters. Everybody getting ready. Everybody pretty much amped and ready to go. Some last minute warm up time on the vert ramp. I'm loving it every minute of it. Everyone is just ripping it. Don't like vert. I'm only mucking around. It's all about fun. Junior day. I want to win at the Junior X Games to get to Disneyland. All right, so the crowd is definitely good to go. Packed inside the Vert Stadium and ready to see the action here. At the X, we take it to the Vert. Aggressive inline style with the Australian from Sydney, 14 years old, Michael Koch. All right, Michael dropping in there, wasting no time, hitting that coping and make sure he grinds both ways. Been skating for a few years now, a couple of broken bones as well, but not from skating, luckily. All right, gets that fish brain on there, takes it back to the opposite side, locking on the backside grind. 
definitely mixing it up and using this whole junior ramp at the moment. Reaches down, touches the top of that ramp. That won't hurt him too much because he's going both ways and he's mixing it up. He's got, he's got plenty of time and he's getting set to drop in one more time. Well, judges really only expecting these Junior X athletes to use the smaller ramp, but you know what? That ain't slowing Michael down. He's going to transfer right into the large ramp and show some more of that skill. Awesome transfer as well. You see him just grinding right across there into the big ramp. Reaches up, climbs up on top. That's going to be a good run there for Michael Cock. Got time for one more drop in. Wants to have the whole experience. And that is the end for Michael Cock. A score of 67. Wearing his crazy hat. 67 points. Not bad. And CJ Wellsmore, one of our favorites from last year. 12 years old. This kid just absolutely, he's a favorite with the Thai crowd. And definitely just chock full of personality. CJ wasting absolutely no time getting into the big ramp. Nice transfer. Look at the air he's getting there, Keith. He absolutely loves coming here. The guy is going large. Oh, yeah. And, you know, he stands, what, about a full meter tall, maybe? Intimidated. And not intimidated by the big ramp at all. CJ lighting it up, airing it out three, four, five feet over the coping. Getting some good air and getting all those grinds in as well. The judges want to see a good mix. They want to see you spin. They want to see you flip. They want to see you grind both ways. And CJ holds it well as he comes down fakie. A little bit sketchy, but manages to ride out. Oh, a nice 540 there. Comes back the other way with another good spin. CJ absolutely tearing up a 720. And then, oh, it gets upside down. Sensational. CJ absolutely tearing it up. And this is what I like about CJ. He got a little sketchy, got out of rhythm, but had the presence of mind to throw as many tricks as he possibly could they're low in the transition. Just look at the air he gets here. Reaches down and grabs those skates as he goes. The hands go in the air. And CJ, a well-deserved rest. A score of 64. All right, now we move on to Japan. Soishiro Kanashima, 14 years old. And this kid, also a ripper. We saw him tearing it up on the park course. And now taking it to the vert. alley -oop fish brain all the way down the coping. Judges loving that full, full grind all the way down the coping, definitely gonna help score him well. Gets himself across into the big ramp and is gonna do exactly the same, bunch of technical tricks and now he's gonna wind up for some big air. You see him grabbing for extra style, alley-oop, backside grind, locking on, spinning, sweet oh. transition back into the junior ramp. Not just sliding across, but getting that spin over there. And look, winds himself up. Oh, it goes down on a big 720. But he's not holding back. He's pulling out all the tough tricks in this final. Well, it's one run, so there is no room for conservatism here. So Ishiro definitely going to have to uh, keep pushing it till the buzzer. <laughs> it spins across the transition to finish off. A score of 65, just edging out CJ. And altogether a good run, but still a couple more skaters to come who have all got some amazing potential. And this one, 10 years old, little Rui Kitamura. He trains with Takeshi and Eito Yasutoko in Osaka on a regular basis, and it really shows. This kid, the smallest kid out here, and goes absolutely huge. This ramp is about three times the height of him, but he's using every inch of it to absolutely make sure he flies out of the top of this ramp. Oh, look at that, getting upside down in that front flip, spinning back the other way as well. Getting a little invert there, the hand goes down on top of the coping, and he is using this ramp to absolute perfection. And look how fluid Rui is skating. He's just absolutely seamless from trick to trick, flowing like an ain't no thing, and the judge is going to be rewarding him well for this. Nice flat spin there from Rui as well, and he has not finished. Look at that, spinning absolutely like a demon. 720, this guy has got it all. Gets his Miller flip in the transition, and I'm telling you, when these kids get bigger, when they get more body strength, you're really going to see some amplitude out of them. But look at that, that's huge for a kid this size. Just flying out of the top of that vert ramp. And Rui edging out the heat right now, 76 and a half points. You know he's stoked, and look at this, the big guns, Takeshi Yasutoko, defending champion, and without a doubt, one of the best skaters in the world. Yeah, he was the winner last year here, of course, and he wants to take home that prize again. He wants another trip to Disneyland, and who wouldn't? Well, Takeshi's got some Summer X Games experience. In fact, he earned a silver medal in San Francisco last year. Look at the difference. This guy is getting absolutely amazing height. Oh, fantastic flat spin there, just nailing it out. The guy is doing it all. He can turn both ways. He can get upside down, and that is absolutely sensational from Takeshi. This guy is one of the best, most technical skaters in the world, hands down. He and his brother Eito have been dominating the inline world for the past couple of years. Australian Shane Yoss kind of stepping into that position lately as well. Um, but boy, you can't take anything away from these guys. And look at Takeshi spinning it right there in the transition one more time. Oh, how about a little flip at the buzzer just because he can. And that's time for Takeshi. 
Look at the air once again, the beautiful scenery in the background. This guy using that ramp to go absolutely huge. And a score of 85.5. That is an absolutely amazing run from Takeshi. All right, let's take a look at some of the other skaters in the heats and see how they fared here at the JX2. And a look at the results, no surprise there. Takeshi Yasutoko taking the gold and 10 more points towards the championship. Rui Kitamura in second place earns the silver and tie skaters rounding out the heat. And a look at the overall standings after two events. Takeshi on top with 14 points and Kazuki Amai right behind him with 12. At Junior X, almost all of the female athletes are sport climbers. Oh, I reckon girls should be in other sports too. Girl can do boys thing too. But now, there's also one female skateboarder, Hong Si Ling from Korea. She is an inspiration to all of us. She's pulling off some really cool tricks back and forth on this mini ramp right here. Can we expect a female biker soon? I like biking a lot. I used to ride with a girl about a couple years ago. She was a bike rider. No, <laughs> I don't know any stunts. But I would like people to teach me if they were willing. Girls will see it on TV and just go, oh what, I want to be a bike rider now. And in the world of aggressive inline... There's a girl, Fabiola da Silva. Fabiola da Silva. And she competes with the guys usually, and she places really high. Fabiola da Silva. Very technical on the coping as well, feeding into the backside royale. Nice topside sole into a 360. Nice! There's a clap, and wow! Maybe sometime we'll get Junior X Games girl in here. I don't know. All right, now on to the Bike Stunt Best Trick Finals. This is going to be unreal. Here it is, three runs, 15 seconds once again out of 100. The Aussies have dominated already on the bikes, but with a great field of ties and, of course, Malaysians, everyone in there, it's going to be an awesome final. Yeah, going to be pretty sick out here and throwing some demos down for the crowd here who was uh, trying to seek some shade here in the heat. We've got some of our visiting pros from the U.S., Koji Kraft, coming off an unreal rookie season on the pro circuit. And this kid, representing the Toyota Schwinn Bicycle Stunt Team, just lights it up. It doesn't matter if it's practice or competition, the kid just going off every single time he takes it to the course. Check this out. Backflip with a no-handed, no-foot variation. That's about as sick as it gets. Um, I think it's better because there's a lot more people and more atmosphere. Now I just think it's going to go off this year. I'm up in the stage where I'm confident with myself and I'm riding excellent. Yeah, Steven's really improved tremendously. Fully fired up for this one, and the crowd ready to see this one throw down as well. Cassie Fulsarip, our first rider, 14 years old. We found him at the X Tours qualifying event in Singapore, and here we go. Looking Line for his best, best trick. trick. Oh, oh. That gets the candy bar. One foot, a bit of a variation there. One foot out the front, one foot out the side. Look at this, good height. That's a good opener there for Cassie Full. Where you get that one foot over the bar and the one foot out for the one footer. It's like two tricks in one. Not bad. Not bad at all. Wang Xin Chun, 15 years old, out of Chinese Taipei. Taking a bit of a long run up on this. He wants plenty of speed as he hits this box. 360. Sweet. Check it out. He wanted that speed and he carried it in perfectly, getting the 360. Wasn't able to, able to clear the deck, but uh, not hurting him too much. 90.67 points. It's a great score. Steven Cadona, definitely one of the dominating forces here out of Australia. He's coming back, going to use the spine. Looks like he's got to set it up. Oh, bar spin 270. I think he might have been looking for 360 out of it, but check him out. Bar spin, 270, right on top of the deck and rides away. You can see that points. ramp just throwing him straight up, and that's why he didn't quite get that distance, but he got the bar spin in there for a score of 88. 15-year-old David Reed, also representing Australia. And David looks like he wants to create, uh, create a little bit of speed coming into this one. Oh, takes a 360 over the spine and sketches out a little bit. Yeah, you can see he just doesn't quite get that full rotation. And that's why he just slides down that ramp. That's not going to be a great score for David Reed. 84-67 was his run three score. We'll have to wait and see how that all adds up. Crowd appreciative nonetheless. And a look at some of our other finalists in the heat.
The opponents are all very strong, but I performed quite well today. I was pretty impressed with that 360 over spawn. I like the course. I'm used to it now. All right, and a look at the rundown. Kasifu Sarib takes the gold with that sweet variation, the candy bar to one footer and 10 points towards his overall championship and ties rounding out the heat. And let's take a look at the overall standings after two events. Steven Cadona on top with 15 points and a tie for second place. Well, while we take a break from competition, I've taken some time out to uh, get a few climbing tips for my big match against Jen from Asia. Here to help me do that is John Bolt from Australia. John, how are you? Great. <laughs> cool. Welcome to Thailand. Now, you're here for JX2. You were here last year. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, psyched. Good stuff. Now, what are you going to do differently this year? Uh, have more fun. Um, yeah, climb harder. Good work. Now, what do I need to climb? If I want to get into it, what would I need? Uh, you need a shoe, and that helps you support on your foot. You need a chalk bag. Just one shoe? Oh, no, you need two. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, you need a chalk bag so you've got grip for your um, hands, and you need a harness so you don't fall off the climb. Oh, there's the chalk right there. Well, mate, I've got to say, I've got to wish you a lot of luck, and uh, we're going to have a good time here at JX2, right? Thank you, yep. <laughs> All right, well, when we come back from the break, there's going to be plenty more extreme action and uh, a bit of extreme action as I race Jen from Asia up the speed wall right here on the Disney Channel. Still to come, the skateboarders race through the slalom course, a beginner's guide to building a climbing wall, and the ladies take it to the speed wall. What's your greatest fear? I'm not telling you that. Uh. <laughs> no way. Greatest fear? Heights. And I'm climbing. Probably snakes. <laughs> I always get scared on up the top because I don't want to fall. Being eaten alive by snails. I don't know about you, but I am definitely enjoying the Junior X Games too. And it's only day two. Now there's plenty more of that to come all week. Now apparently, Dan and Jen were having a death-defying race to the top of the speed wall. And I think that's coming up now, so enjoy. You're watching GX2. I'm Jen and at Junior X Speed Climbing Wall. And I'm Dan, and right now we've been speaking to some speed climbers. We've spoken to Jim Waugh, and I've enlisted the help of Joe, another professional climber, to help get us two up onto the wall to race against each other, to race against time, and to race against gravity. gravity. Joe, any last minute tips, mate? Yes. Both of you want to keep your hands moving, okay. keep your feet moving, keep your head up, and last tip, you want to go for it. All right, cheers. Dan, all the best. I'll see you at the top. You will. Here we go. On your mark, get set, go! We made it, Jen! Well done, Dan! Get a word what a race, mate! Oh. How, do these, how do these guys do it, man? I don't know. Oh my god. We made it. This is full on stuff. That's all at the top. Oh, I can't even get my words out. I know. This is I'm what JX2 is all about. So stay tuned as we give you more about day two on JX2. Definitely. Two. Catch my breath. Hi, this is Sasha Steinhorst, and we're at the park course. Today's event is going to be the slalom event, more like an obstacle. Basically, the person that gets through the course in the fastest time is going to be deemed the winner. We tried to keep the course kind of easy for the small kids because, uh, some of the kids weren't able to go over the spines or over the snowboard jump and stuff. So we tried to keep it a little bit more simple and that way they could learn to control their speed better. Learn to balance on your board. A lot of the kids nowadays are really into technical flip tricks. So it's kind of good to have this here as an event. Teaches kind of well-roundedness of skateboarding. I think it's going to be a really good event and it's going to be exciting so make sure you stick in and check it out. Skateboarding. All right, and our skateboard slalom finals, it is all about speed. The top 10 semi-finalists are in there. One run, the fastest time wins. And a look at the running order right there. Skaters from Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Korea, all ready to rip it up here on the park course. It's all about speed. Benji Bodner flashing us the X, ready to get it done. Some last minute preparations. Hong Si Lin, our nine-year-old Korean skater, all right, before we start, let's see how the athletes are rating the slalom event this year. It's hard. Got to get lots of speed. 
so they can get a good time. The skaters, yeah, they're heaps better. They're improved way more. It's a very, oh, it's a very good course. Not nervous. All right, and our first skater, Faiz Razimi, 14 years old from Malaysia. All right, you can see it's all about speed, it's all about consistency. These guys have got to pick the fastest line around these curves. Every time they put their foot down, it's either going to slow them down or it's an opportunity to pump, but they've got to make sure that timing is correct and use these ramps to their best abilities. And part of speed is uh, creating speed, so you don't want to be leaving the ground. You don't want to be going for airs, you don't want to be trying tricks, you just want to kick your way through the finish line. And here we go. First run, 20.87 seconds, not bad. And Benji Bodner getting his bounce on. 10 years old, out of Sydney. Big crank down this first heel. That's all important. Making this turn is where it really matters as well. You can see these guys using that ramp. Benji probably lost a little bit of speed around that turn. But look at Benji pumping with his knees. That's got to be helping him out a little bit. Going to bank it down that quarter pipe right there. Kicking. You got to kick to make the speed. Now it takes it back down the spine. You got to kick for the finish line. Kick it all the way. And 22.75 seconds for Benji Bodner. I think those short legs are making it a little bit tough there for Benji. <laughs> they got the short legged disadvantage. 15 years old, Park Gun Joe from Korea. Getting some good speed down that first ramp. You see here, it's just starting to slow down a little around that first corner. Looking very casual as yeah, he comes around the first turn. Just not pumping his way through it the way he needs to be to go for the gold. Got to kick your way through it and build some speed here. Back down the spine, carving back down, surf style. You just got to kick your way to the finish line. And 22.09 seconds, not bad. Long legs help. Obviously, you can see he wasn't pushing anywhere near as hard as Benji, but still managed to be a bit quicker. From Indonesia, Nova Akbar Bosley. And Nova starting out with good pump off the ramp, trying to carry some speed. Going a little bit slow around that planter box, but wants to make sure that he stays on the board. That's half the battle right there for sure. He also stayed a little bit tighter around that corner as well, so he's actually taking a shorter track around this course. And Nola kicking his way across the finish line, trying to get the speed and 21.13 seconds. That's the fast time so far. Oh, Blake Ellis, 15 years old, out of Sydney, Australia. One of the most competent skaters out here for sure. He's a vert skater at heart, but let's see what kind of board control and speed he can build in here. Good form around that first corner. You can see him just pumping as he comes back down that ramp. He actually hasn't had to put his foot down and pump yet. The guy's just carrying some good speed. Good couple of big pushes. Those long legs are really going to help Blake. And Blake going to carve it and kick it across the finish line right there. And 19.97 seconds, the first guy to break the 22nd mark. Yeah, yeah, and the crowd digging that right there. Much props to Blake Ellis. And a look at some of our other finalists in the heat, Crazy Fear to Us, Kobe Murphy, and a couple of other skaters. Yeah, it was fun. I was better than last year. And it went a little something like this. Blake Ellis earning the gold. Faiz Razimi takes the silver and seven points towards his overall championship. Kobe Murphy from Australia with two points towards his. And let's take a look at the overall championship points after two events. Blake Ellis in the lead with 17 points, the Malaysian in second. Course setter has to decide how difficult the climbs need to be and make it equally difficult for the person who is short and for the person who is tall. These are some basic climbing holds. This is what we would call a, a sloper. There's not much to grab onto. The wall is overhanging. Now it's really hard to hang onto. This is what we call a crimper. So it's very small, but you can you have something to grab onto. This is what we would use maybe for a foothold. Can't really grab it for your fingers, only for your feet. This is what climbers call a jug. Doesn't matter if it's like on a roof. Or on a wall like this, you get to this hold and you say, Sport climbing. All right, thanks, Joe, for that intro to course setting. I'll have to use that later on. Floodlights have been switched on as we move into the girls' speed climbing finals. Going to happen under the lights. And, Bruce, this elimination bracket rounds. Yeah, here's how it works. We've got eight girls into the final. It is head-to-head -head competition. You win, you move on. You lose, thanks for coming. Well, you're evil, brother Bruce, but you're honest. All right, we had a record number of girls taking part in this year's climbing event, 18 in total. 
Each of them determined to fly to the top of the tough speed course, but first things first, girls gotta wish each other good luck. And now we'll look at some highlights from the semifinals where it's all about your time against the clock. That was China's Wei Xing Ju, and here's Diana Sasiriana from Indonesia. And an Aussie and an Aussie as Adrian edges out Jess Riley. And here's another Aussie, Amanda Newing, racing up the wall with Mary Ansico in hot pursuit. Tough going for the Filipino, Dalia Guerrero, but Lacey Ming goes all the way. All right, Wei Xing Ju, 13 years old, against Adrian Lindley Wood, 15. And this is a pretty even start, but as you look on the left-hand side, Wei Xing Ju from China with an early advantage. The extra reach, though, from Adrian might be a bit of a bonus as she comes back up. A little bit of a slow start. Wei definitely got out in front, but it's going to be close as they get towards the top of this first wall. Yeah, Adrian making up some ground here. Now a very close Ooh. race towards the top, and Wei Xing Ju edges out Adrian at the very top. So Wei Xing Ju will advance to the next round. Amanda Newing, one of our favorites out here from Sydney, Australia, 14 years old versus Lee Su Min. Amanda got the height advantage without a doubt, but Lee Su Min, very quick, very agile, Keith. Yeah, so Amanda has a little bit of a reach advantage, but it doesn't really play as much as you think it will because it's all about forward progress. And a slip right there from Amanda going to hurt her. And the Korean now just making her way up the wall. Amanda going to have to try and make up some ground here and use that reach advantage. Getting close to the top now, and Lee just in front. Has she got enough to pull it off? She does. Gets right ahead there of Amanda right at the end. She will move on to the next round. Well, that's a tough break for Amanda. A little slip cost her dearly, and Lee Su Min advances to the next bracket. You know, you see Amanda wearing that pink good luck bracelet she's got. Uh, our belayers get them unclipped. Our girls uh, showing some, displaying some sportsmanship. A little congratulations to each other. And now it looks like uh, one goes on to the medal round in One's done for the day. So Lee Su Min and Wei Sheng Ju will be the ones into that final. He'll have a little bit of a break, get himself set once again, and they'll be up that wall as fast as they can. And the crowd amping them up. They know exactly what these climbers are looking for. A little enthusiasm from the crowd goes a long way with the energy of the climbers. And our gold medal bracket right here. All right, China against Korea. A good start there from Lee. Wei just ahead, though, as they get halfway up this wall. One mistake is going to be the end of it. It's going to be the difference between gold and silver here in this final. And the Korean climber working quicker, but the Chinese climber working a little bit smoother. Oh, look how close this is. Oh, oh. cannot pick between the two. That is so close. You can see that Wei just came back right at the end here. Have a look at this. Can you pick it? That oh. is so close. And we'll Wei Xing Ju just again. by a hair. Okay, let's see if we can it. pick it. There's the touch. Oh. That is... You know, I'm glad I'm not a judge. Oh, exactly. <laughs> That'd be way too much hard work. <laughs> yeah. And the call goes to the officials in Wei Xingju taking the gold. All right, a look at some of our other finalists in the heat here, our girls' speed climbing finals. I feel a little tired. Maybe I'm too nervous or I use too much strength during the climb. And Wei Xingju very happy. One of only two sport climbers from China, earning 10 points towards the overall standings. Lee Su Min from Korea earns the silver with seven points. And the Aussie, Amanda Newing, takes the bronze medal and five points towards the overall standings. The Indonesian, they're at the bottom of the list with two points. We are adding more winners to the list, but with 16 events in total, we're not even at the halfway point to finding out who our JX2 champions will be. And there will be more competitions on our very next show. So stick with us, but until then, I'm Dan signing off from Phuket, Thailand. And I'm Jaren signing off for today, and we'll leave you with a sneak preview of what's still to come on Disney Channel and ESPN Junior Ice Games 2, presented by Toyota. JX2. Spinning into the next show, the Flatland finalists. The skateboarders are grabbing all the headlines. And it's a heart-pumping race to the top for the boy speed climbers. See you at the X.